Be a good listener. Sit quietly and wait your turn to talk, right? Not in Japan. Here, it's actually rude not to interrupt someone. And here's why. Welcome to my old dojo. I practiced a martial art called Kendo, the sword path. While we drilled our way through footwork and each cut of the sword over and over, my highest ranked sensei watched with intent eyes and a jolly smile. But he wouldn't wait to grade us on our skills. Feedback was constant. Always talking, always mm, so, 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 so. Every step, every move of the hand, right or wrong, there was almost a rhythm to it. A rhythm with a constant flow of interjections. Looking back, I think what was going on here was a kind of aizuchi. Consider a conversation in English. The person who's talking shares a thought, and you listen quietly until they finish. <laughs> no, actually, that may be polite for some, but for most of us, there's more back and forth, with room for reactions, transitions, and taking turns. But that's important. No cuts. Wait your turn. Now a conversation in Japanese. Notice all the interaction by the listener. The speaker barely gets out the topic before they're cut off. Then come ahs and yeses and really scattered throughout. Clearly, Japan has a different opinion on what being a good listener means. To see why, think back to Kendo. Not Kendo with my sensei, but 550 years ago, when a struggle for shogunate succession broke out into the intense Oni Noran. Warriors trained to take up the sword, and iron workers to produce them. As swordsmith and apprentice hammered together back and forth, they coined a new term. Aizuchi, mutual mallet. Later, this compound became a metaphor for Japan's culturally valued take on being a good listener. Today, chiming in is still Aizuchi Otsu, to strike mutual mallets. This involves talking back with a bunch of tokens, little words or phrases. Your choice of tokens varies, but most get reused frequently. And not only when it's your turn, more often than not, and for some by definition, you say these tokens when the speaker is still talking. It's happening at the same time, overlapping the speaker's speech. But Aizuchi is not merely a list of memorized keywords. Japanese listeners pay attention, even repeating or asking for more. So last month, last month, yes, I was visiting family. Family, really? Master this, because bad Aizuchi can get you labeled dorai, cold, shallow. I first learned about ironworkers and mutual mallets from this master's thesis. The same anthropologist later did a study on conversations between US and Japanese business people. She acknowledges the Japanese stereotype that America Jin are dry, but then introduces someone who is never called cold, Gary. Here is Gary helping a coworker with an English lesson. What makes him so warm? Overlapping the coworker and constantly using feedback tokens. Don't misinterpret these tokens though. Go look up hi. What does it mean? Yes, not in the world of Aizuchi. Another US business person, let's say not Gary, is giving a Japanese subordinate advice on running an ad campaign. Despite repeating hi, the employee does not take or implement any of not Gary's advice. What? Well, there were hints of disagreement here, but also so important, these tokens tell you I follow, go on. As these researchers put it, interrupting Aizuchi mean I listen, but never agreement or empathy. Now, they use the word back channel, a term coined in 1970 for short messages a listener gives back to a speaker. English also has overlapping back channels. Japanese just does it more, like three times more. And curiously, Mandarin does it a lot less, less than Korean, where the metaphor is instead beating the mutual drum. I like that one. English listeners tend to back-channel when it's time to take turns, but like Japanese, Korean listeners were heard back-channeling between turns. Speakers actually cued listeners to back-channel by raising pitch and drawing out sounds. So one reason it's impolite not to interrupt in Japanese may come down to this simple mechanism, pitch. 
Analyzing a bunch of messy conversations, this paper found that speakers were lowering their pitch 110 milliseconds before back channels. Low or maybe high pitch change was a solid predictor, better than the meaning of the utterance, better even than whether speakers have finished their thought. So active listeners, but also active speakers, inviting reactions and building conversations together. Dynamic. Japanese speakers even use loops. A back-back channel to respond to your back channel signals that the floor is now open for your turn. <laughs> speakers prompting listeners, prompting speakers. This is what reminded me of the rhythms and interruptions of my training. My sensei did give opinions. Almost okay when you did well. Zawan when you glimpsed hard to repeat perfection. But often I think the feedback was Aizuchi that really meant keep going. And with you here supporting me, that's exactly what I plan to do. Animating Linguistic Tales takes a while, but my hands are already busy with the next one. So stick around and subscribe for language. <laughs>